Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. It's such a pleasure to be able to speak to you. Um, maybe you could kick off with a brief introduction to this incredible film, She Paradise. What can people expect if they're going to watch it? Um, yeah, so She Paradise is a coming of age film set in Trinidad. And it's also set against the backdrop of soca music, um, dance. And it's my first feature length film. Um, I shot it in Trinidad two years ago. Uh, with some friends and it's finally on streaming so I'm really excited that it's out there and people can kind of see this this film. And what was the inspiration behind it? Why did you think that this was the right story uh, you know to put on the screen for for your feature debut? Uh, so I, um, I was born and raised in Trinidad and I was also a dancer and a model um, you know before I transitioned into film. Um, when I graduated from film school in New York, I really wanted to return home to the Caribbean region uh, and tell a story from a woman's point of view. Um, I also you know, feel really passionate about making work set in the West Indies, which is you know, where a lot of my teenage years and experiences are, are you know, uh, closest so it was just important to kind of go back home and um and tell the story um you know kind of drawing from my experiences as a teenager mm. and in that sense uh you know how much of it would you say how many of the moments were things that happened in real life you know what was that line between uh reality and fiction that you used in you know putting the narrative together yeah I mean it it was a mixture of my personal experiences and um you know observations and I would say quite a few of you know the scenarios are based on you know some stories that did happen but I think for the most part it's mostly the characters that are kind of heavily influenced by a lot of people that I that I'm close to or grew up with um so even if the you know the, the story itself is somewhat fictionalized I think a lot of the the truth comes from the inspiration behind the the women and um their their characters on screen and it feels like you know one of the biggest things that you had to get right was your cast and you know, all the women, uh, you know, the group of them are all absolutely phenomenal, but in particular, Odessa um, as your central character sparkle. So how did you find uh, these women and how did you work with them to, you know, make sure you could achieve your vision for the film? Yeah, I, it was, um, so, you know, kind of shooting in Trinidad, we're shooting outside of um, any sort of in the realist structured industry model. So we had to kind of become creative with the casting process. Uh, Onessa luckily did show up to a casting call that I had. Um, so I'm very fortunate that she decided to, sh decided to show up. But, um, you know, Ch the Chelsea who plays Mika, I reached out to her on Instagram. And, uh, you know, Shan went to the same school as me. So that, you know, happened in a very informal way. But it was a mixture of, you know, casting calls and reaching out to people that we knew and social media to kind of like pull the cast um, together and the process of working with them it was it was really refreshing to work with people who who were already in the dance world and close to their characters but we did spend a lot of time with each other uh, leading up to shooting I think we spent about maybe a month and a half meeting regularly watching films together uh, rehearsing, reading the script, talking about the story. So there was, you know, even though they were non actors, there was like a lot of preparation and, and time spent building up to the shooting days. And I was also thinking when I was watching it, almost you've got that extra layer than you might have uh, in other films because of the fact that it's celebrating uh, dance. So you must have had to have kind of done all that choreography and all those rehearsals mm -hmm. then on top of you know having them having to learn their lines and and that kind of thing so was mm -hmm. the the dance element you know obviously it's such a big part of the film did it was that another challenge to get just right yeah uh, yeah so it was it was twofold we had you know rehearsals for you know the acting and then we also had dance rehearsals 
um, leading up to filming. But I was, I think, um, you know, just the nature of the style of dance and everything, a lot of the dance that happens on screen um, and some of our best moments actually happened when they were improvising um, and the actors just got taken away in the moment by the music and by the energy and they love to perform. Um, so you could tell like, you know, especially those party scenes and those dance scenes, uh, you could tell like in those moments, they just really like enjoyed being the center of attention and like having an audience, you know, a captivated audience and like a camera that was just giving them, you know, all the space to express themselves. So I think a lot, some of the, you know, the, the strongest dance moments we have um, on film are actually, you know, improvised moments that weren't, weren't choreographed um, where they, where the actors themselves were kind of really like pulling from people's energy and like getting carried away in the moment. And one thing that I thought was really interesting about the perspective and, you know, the way you filmed, particularly the dance scenes, is this kind of, um, you know, the, the dance style can, is very acrobatic, but it's undeniably sexy as well. But we're not always seeing things, you know, necessarily through the male gaze. It's also just an appreciation of the dance movements of, of you know, the, the, the female figure, um, you know, the costumes and the way they look. So was that something important for you to get right? Yeah, I think having been on the other side of the lens myself um, and, you know, being in a position where I am performing to the camera, I think there was this kind of natural connection between myself um, and the actors. Um, and, and we did, and, you know, I think there is this kind of, you're right, like this objective kind of distance uh, in the way that we filmed and approached the dance scenes um, that really sort of gave them the freedom, freedom to, you know, to, to, to go there without us trying to like, you know, um, emphasize or like create this lens through which we see it. It was just kind of allowing, stepping back and allowing them to take control in those moments. Yeah. And, you know, the look of it is just bursting with colour. It's like incredibly, incredibly vivid. So, you know, how did you go about getting, you know, the hair, the makeup, the costumes, but, you know, also the overall aesthetic of the film just right? Yeah, I mean, so that process of getting the aesthetic of the film together really started with this short. Um, and, and I think it's just, it, it wasn't even an imposition on my part. It, it was a natural response to the environment um so i remember when i started location scouting for the short film i was walking in downtown port of spain around nelson street area in east port of spain which was where most of the film is set um and i walked past this abandoned bar that hasn't really been um open since the early like since the 2000s um but it's still very much intact and all the hand painted murals are still there even though the bar is closed um and i found i had to you know do some asking and digging to find the owner clyde and when i clyde opened the bar for me there was just this like natural red lighting in this space that came from the sun sort of shining through the red curtains. And I just remember thinking like, you know, seeing that natural red light and the murals that were still kind of intact from the nineties and everything. And like all the Bob Marley posters, I was like, you know, like this, this environment, this place, Trinidad, you know, Port of Spain, especially, is just such a naturally like vibrant, colorful, you know, space. And there's also a huge culture of like hand painted um, signage you know, that you get through all the streets. Um, and so it was just kind of like, it wasn't even us kind of imagining a world. It was like kind of taking what's already there and just kind of bringing it to, to film and, and allowing that natural kind of essence of the city to, to shine through. Mm. And I think what's also really fascinating about the film is, you know, you're constantly not sure where you are with each of the characters and, and their relationship. And at some points you feel like Sparkle's really finding her identity, she's becoming empowered. And then at other moments it feels quite the opposite. And actually, you know, mm. is this exploitation, um, is she being taken advantage of not only by the sort of music um, video producers, but even her fellow uh, dancers. So. What did you want to explore through this film and what did you want it to kind of say about women in these sorts of positions? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, 
uh, Melina and I, when we were writing it, uh, I don't think uh, we we kind of set out to to particularly, um, you know, give a moral tale or a clear sort of message of of, but we did want to tell a story that felt true um, and nuanced and also complex. Um, and so I do think that kind of like meandering of her finding empowerment and moments of strength, but then also kind of dealing with these complex, um, you know, sp spaces is just kind of a part of the full kind of picture that we wanted to, to give. And we just kind of wanted to present her journey. Um, and, and I think some of the conversations and discussions that come out of that has been really interesting um, to hear um, and necessary. And, and I, we just, you know, I think a lot of the stories felt familiar to us. Um, but I, I do think I, I, when we were writing the script, I don't think we had any sort of didactic agenda. It was really just kind of like, this is, this is this woman's journey. This is her story. This is her interaction with this new sisterhood. This is what she learns. This is how she grows. This is how, you know, she has to, um, you know, this not, this is, these are these spaces that she has to navigate. But I do, um, but I, we did find like their moments, um, you know, it was, I think, important to kind of stay at the end of the day to kind of like stay with these women's, um, subjectivity mm -hmm. and you know when you're you know in front the lens there's ways in which you can sort of like manipulate the gaze to your advantage or to kind of take back your power um, and it was important that regardless of that at all times we felt like we were rooted in their in their in their point of view um, and that and that that was kept with the um, with the audience because it feels like it's a debate that's constantly going on about you know mm -hmm. what that line is between um empowerment you know like even if you just look at like you know music videos with Beyonce or Rihanna or um you know the model Emily Ratajkowski I'm kind of pronounce her name wrong um and she's just written a book about how she's constantly you know reassessing what that relationship is between, you know, when she's owning her own image or, or when she feels it, it's like being consumed. Um, mm -hmm. So it feels very topical in that way, would you say, to be having conversations and for films like this to prompt those sorts of conversations? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think it's, it's very topical. Um, and I think it's great that we have you know, just kind of going back to the subjectivity, it's great that women in entertainment and friendly lens aren't just considered as diminished objects, you know, but as people who think and can talk about how that feels um, and, and their experiences of feeling empowered or feeling, you know, like, you know, different to that. I think it's just kind of important to hear, you know, the voices um, instead of just remaining as people who are, are being looked at or whose images are being consumed, that we can look back and we can talk back and have these discussions. And I think that's, um, it is very topical, you're right. Mm. And how does it feel to you as well to be able to put, you know, a bit of your culture on the screen? You know, maybe these are um, lives and people's stories that we don't see on the screen enough. And for, you know, to be really exploring and studying, you know, women's lives which again in the past perhaps we haven't seen enough of mm -hmm. on the big screen yeah I mean it, it it's very I mean the whole experience is very very fulfilling um especially you know I think the excitement around the film being released from the from the lead actors and and that excitement around the idea of just being seen um is really important um and I think you know it is a it is sometimes like you you write something or you you make something that you think um is you know small and sort of contained and um you know with but then when it has an impact that's that's kind of like greater than you imagined uh it just kind of reminds you how important it is to sort of um to tell your stories regardless of like how small they may seem or how you know, or how intimate they may seem, um, that they are, th that those small intimate moments 
uh, so underrepresented or so undocumented that they that they can have a, such a large and important impact. Um, and so that has it, it, the whole you know process of kind of like writing this and then having people you know reach out and and talk about like how you know just watching this film and seeing women like themselves or like seeing familiar stories or like you know hear even hearing their accents on screen like just gives them goosebumps you know and I think like that has been really really um, reassuring and and fulfilling you know for everyone behind and in front of the camera on this project and like you say it doesn't have a specific message but what do you hope people will take away from watching your film hmm. <laughs> I mean I you know it's it's hard to kind of say what um what I hope the the audience takes away but I you know I think um I think just kind of like girlhood is is complex um but I I do think you know for far too long we've just seen like all these stereotypical representations of ourselves um and I think you know seeing um West Indian women, even black women, in a way that's nuanced and humanizing, um, and seeing how seeing, I think just being able to sort of like ent enter into to an internal world um, uh, that feels honest and true. Um, and I think for me, as you know, as a viewer, as an audience member I, myself, like feeling like I have met um, very little feeling like there are very few moments where I can see people like myself and feel like that those depictions uh, are honest and real and that frustration but being able to kind of make a film where where you change the narrative um, and and yeah and I just you know I hope that people are able to sort of just kind of enjoy this you know this young woman's journey and and this sisterhood and um, you know do you see that uh the tide's turning in some respects that we are seeing more films that are female led uh you know they've got female creatives behind them and that there's more diversity in terms of you know ethnicity on screen or do you still think we've got a long way to go in that respect yeah i mean i think there's definitely been progress and i think we also have a long way to go as well um, you know, I, I always joke that I, I went to film school pre 2016 and I remember there was like, as soon as I graduated, there was this whole, um, you know, thread on Twitter about the Oscars being so white. And that was the first time Moon, a film like Moonlight won, you know? Um, but before, before that, especially when I was in film school, I mean, the narrative was just, you know, come back it was it was just so um undiverse that even professors were telling you know telling me you need to reconsider like <laughs> what you're gonna do when you graduate because the idea of a woman directing or even a woman of color was just unthinkable in that time um and and it did feel like as a min minority in in that space it did kind of feel frustrating because you weren't really seeing t television or a lot of movies with people like yourself so it did feel like you don't didn't belong I mean I do think that there's been a lot of progress since then and a lot of um diversification and but yeah I, I agree that we still have a very long way to go and then just finally can you tell us what you're working on now or next I think you're already shooting your next next thing so can you tell us anything about it <laughs> oh I'm I'm not shooting my oh. next film yet um I was just on set for so I should just document um, I shoot commercials and music videos and I am also like working on short films um, but I am currently co-developing a television series on a mini limited series on Calypso Rose um, she's considered a sort of a queer feminist icon in the Caribbean and she's one of the few women who um, was at the forefront of the Calypso scene in this in the 70s um, she won Calypso King twice and then by the second time she won it they had to rename it to the gender neutral title of Calypso Monarch um, so she won Calypso King and then when she won it again it was like okay <laughs> this is clearly not a um you know it's uh clearly just it needs change but she's really 
uh, such a trailblazer and such an inspiration. And it's been exciting to kind of dig into the archival material around her life. Um, and so we've been developing um, a mini series that starts in, with her childhood in Tobago and then kind of follows her journey um, to becoming, you know, uh, the title holder. And I've just also been working on like other screenplays, uh, but mostly sort of development and writing based work. Amazing. Well, um, thank you so much for telling us all about um, She Paradise, but also can't wait to see, you know, the outcome of these next projects as well. So thanks thank so you. much. Lovely to chat okay. to you. <laughs> Lovely to chat to you too. Thanks a Bye. lot. See you. <laughs> Bye. Thanks.